two of the off-grid engineering dual battery install in Project Forerunner. And in this video, we'll be going over putting in the auxiliary battery bracket and auxiliary battery. Um, during this part of the install, there were several key things that we did to make sure that this was gonna last over the long haul. Um, other than those little things that kind of delayed us and, and, and made our project a little bit longer, um, if you know about them ahead of time, they're all pretty straightforward and pretty easy to tackle. Uh, no major modifications, no cutting or anything like that to get that battery in. So thanks a lot. Hope you enjoy the video. Found in here and the first the first one that we looked at um, trying to move is this one. So there's a there's a switch you gotta flip up to get the harness open. And then you slide that right out. Now the thing is, is this this wire bra bracket and plug can't stay in there the way that it is because um, this part of the bracket uh, right here goes right over that spot, so we're gonna have to zip tie that and reroute it uh, so you somewhere else. Pull that. Yeah. Yep. Just be gentle. Yeah. So we just popped that out. It was a little scary. It took us a minute to decide how we we're gonna take that out, but it just popped right out. And now we're just gonna hold that out of the way while we dry fit some other components. We've discovered a few things here. Number one, we're, we're, we've decided we're gonna go get some nylon bushings to put on the back side of this bracket here. Um, just because this aluminum rubbing up against the uh, paint, painted steel here, we're not really confident that that's gonna hold up long term. So we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and take care of that. The other thing is we have a section of the battery um, tray that's rubbing up against a major boot that's uh, bringing a wiring harness into the vehicle. So we're a little worried about that abrading over time. So got a couple ideas about that. We're going to give some feedback to Matt and see if, uh, if he's got any ideas that he may want to address with it. I have an update on the auxiliary battery tray from Matt Carter at Off Grid Engineering. Um, he, uh, he's aware of that tray rubbing on that boot, and I guess it does the same thing on the Tacomas, and they've done over 100 of those installs. Um, they've never had a problem with it because both of those things are uh, stationary and, and any rubbing is just from vibration. Um, and they, they have one with at least 30,000 miles on it uh, that hasn't shown any sign of wear. We still have concerns with that rubbing over time. Um, we're still gonna take some precautions. Right now we're gonna leave that foam in there. We have several ideas of things that we might do to solve the problem. Um, probably the most aggressive is just to cut the uh, corner off the bracket uh, and then polish that smooth. Um, but we'll definitely keep you posted on any changes we make in the future. Um, we may also try and put some thin bushings under here. So we've, uh, we've got some of these rubber bushings. We're gonna put these smaller guys underneath the battery bracket and these larger guys are going to go up against the uh, the side of the truck in between the bracket and the truck um, we so it looks like we're going to be able to route this ground right down up underneath the bracket we're gonna have plenty of room to do that um, so we're just going to put a little bit of extra electrical tape around the wire to protect it from getting uh, getting some abrasion on the battery tray itself. So right now I'm trying to find some materials around the house that we can use to keep from the bracket from abrading that uh, wiring harness, uh, the rubber one. The best thing I have so far is this foam pipe stuff. All right, so you can see the foam here. That's actually working out really good. So the battery is so heavy, it's just gonna squish that down, but it's enough to protect that from rubbing raw up against there. All right, so we had the whole uh, auxiliary bracket in. Um, it's taken a little while. We ended up uh, thread locking everything. We put a couple washers on the two front studs on each side, a couple of those rubber washers. And we got, you can see the rubber washers uh, here on the, the main bracket. So originally, we were going to just wire this guy across the top of the battery. I think I just closed it again. I'm sure. I'm gonna do it. And it was connected like this. So if you open this guy up, this little grommet guy just pulls straight out. Yep. 
So to, to open this up, it's going to be closed in like that. You got to find this side of it and you lift that up and then you can Pull slide it. it out like that and it opens up. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut that electrical tape there and on just that one spot and route this guy underneath the bracket under here and make our connection with this guy back behind the bracket behind here and that way we'll have a nice clean look on our connection. Reroute it. If you look under there you can see the cables all the way rerouted and this guy is fully connected and there's plenty of room for the battery to sit in there and it won't put any pressure on it. So let's pop the battery back in. So one of the hardest things is, get, is getting the daggone battery in because Because it's like a funky angle and so much shite you gotta move around. You just, to right. you just gotta know how to work it. Fit. Let's hope it fits. It fits. Getting close. Mm -hmm. sure. Looking good. Keep an eye out for part three where we'll be installing the front bracket the MLICR switch, and we'll be uh, wiring the remote uh, control switch for the MLACR. Thanks a lot. Today's video is brought to you by Oduel, Bush NA, and Yingling. Unfortunately, I cannot recommend Oduel or Bush NA. Yingling, however, is highly recommended. If you like this video, please give us the thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. And always feel free to leave us any comments or questions that you might have.